In the final part of the lecture, we will look at a localization method that is becoming extremely popular due to its high accuracy. And it is also part of many modern wireless devices today, such as iPhone. Uh, and this method is called ultra wideband. So how do we improve accuracy of localization system? Let's say we go back to trial iteration. So one of the things we can do is we can send, let's say we are sending small RF pulse from the transmitter to the receiver and we measure the angle of, uh, uh, we measure the arrival time of this uh, small radio pulse. And then we can actually perform things like trial iteration to figure out basically the location and the distance of the object from the transmitter. So the question that we, we need, need to consider when we actually are sending these pulses is that what is the exact time of the arrival of the signal? So typically a signal has this peak. So what would you consider to be the arrival time? And this is important because this actually dictates the localization accuracy. So propagation of wireless signals in a real environment is complex because these signals actually bounce off the environment. So you have walls and other objects in the in the uh, in, in any physical space and the wireless signals get bounced from these uh, different objects in the environment. And what is the impact of this bouncing? We find that several time delayed version of these signals arrive at the receiving antenna because these signals get bounced and ha have different delays. So we have different time delayed version of these signals that arrive at the receiving antenna. And the result is that the received signal energy is sort of smeared in time. And the more reflections, the more this smearing happens and the longer is the rise time. And the amount of smearing that happens is very much dependent on the environment. And this actually has an impact in terms of finding the time of arrival because the the, the signals get, get broader, smeared, and it becomes difficult to estimate what's the precise time of arrival of this radio pulse. So let's look at it in action. So we have these two signals that are arriving at two different time and the resulting signal at the receiver is sort of like this, not a narrow pulse, but a smeared signal. And this is where sort of like the, we talk about the rise of time, which becomes a challenge. So how do we tackle this challenge? So the uh, ultra wideband actually helps us with it. So it is, uh, as the name suggests, in ultra wideband, we increase the bandwidth of the signal that is transmitted. So we transmit these radio pulses over a wide band. And the result is that if you look at the time domain, these radio pulses become very narrow. And with such narrow pulses, there is no smearing that happens in the radio waves as they travel over multiple parts towards the receiver device. So instead, these now small radio pulses arrive at very distinct time at the receiver device. So let's look at this in action again. So we have these two narrow pulses and they arrive at two distinct time. And if you look at basically the resulting signals uh, that appears at the receiver device, we have two distinct pulses and not this sort of like smeared one pulse. So this actually uh, uh, spreading the uh, signal over wider bandwidth or generating narrow pulse allows us to make highly accurate measurement of time of arrival. And that actually translates uh, when you, you use methods such as trial iteration, it allows you to have very high accuracy for localization. And at what scale we can actually get at centimeter scale uh, accuracy for performing localization using this method. So while this is sort of like the basic method where uh, we can achieve high accuracy, but the, we can also further improve the accuracy of ultra wideband localization system. And how we can do that by using, for example, multiple antennas or transmit over multiple channels or frequencies or and also receive over multiple antennas. So by combining all of these, we can actually get much better uh, accuracy. And of course, uh, we talked about backscatter communication, which is a transmission mechanism that allows you to communicate at low power by reflecting or absorbing ambient radio signals. And we can also use the backscatter mechanism with ultra wideband to achieve very low power transmission uh, for uh, supporting localization on even energy harvesting or battery free devices. 
So ultra wideband is now already part of many consumer devices, including, for example, some of the iPhones have now ultra wideband radios uh, part of it. And over the coming years, uh, the role of ultra wideband is only going to increase and you're going to encounter more and more devices that are using ultra wideband for supporting localization and even communication. So with this, we come to an end to ultra wideband and let's just briefly, very quick look at some of the other me methods and mechanisms uh, and uh, techniques that are used for performing localization. So, and so another technique that is uh, used uh, is called ultrasound, which actually uses acoustic signals. And the hardware to do ultrasound measurements is typically not very complex, and uh, and it can uh, uh, and it's sort of like it's the uh, it the it it's not as complex as, for example, dealing with radio waves. Uh, and by you using acoustic signals, we also benefit from the confined nature of the sound because the sound uh, pro does not propagate as well as radio waves. So in some respect, it can be constrained to physical spaces. Uh, because sound propagates much slower compared to light or uh, radio waves, uh, less uh, it also has less overhead in terms of synchronization, which actually again goes back that it can make the hardware to be much simpler compared to dealing with radio waves. So, but what would be the disadvantage of using ultrasound or sound waves for uh, localization? So the sound waves require much more energy to transmit. It has slower update rate and range, and it can also be of course harmful to animals because some animals can actually listen to uh, these uh, sound signals, which might be inaudible to us, which we are using for localization, but it can sort of like impact them negatively. So. Uh, while sound waves has some advantages, but it also has some very sort of like serious uh, disadvantages and you need to be careful in using sound for localization. So we have also talked about, for example, IMUs, which are uh, uh, part of smartphone uh, comprising of things like accelerometer, gyroscope or magnetometer can also be used uh, uh, together with sort of appropriate machine learning or other algorithms to sort of like help you navigate in the environment and figure out your location. So one of the things that, uh, especially with the uh, sort of like um, uh, interest around things like metaverse is that uh, uh, things like augmented reality can also help you localize and how does it work? We use QR code quite a lot in uh, the environment here where they are, we are make, using them for making payments, but in a similar way, we can have QR code sort of like embedded in the environment. And then you can use the, uh, uh, the camera on your smartphone to sort of like take picture and get a rough idea about where you are because these QR codes can sort of like embed information about the location where you are in the building, for example. Finally, I'll talk about another like very interesting uh, possibility and it's uh, not used as much, but there have been some research work that have actually explored this, is that we can actually even use vibrations to localize objects. And how can we actually use vibration? For example, you could actually have a device vibrate using its uh, motors. For example, your typically phones have uh, 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 motors that uh, vibrate when, for example, you're receiving phone calls. So you can sort of like repurpose them to vibrate. And then also, as we talked about, the phones have accelerometers and IMUs uh, that can allow you to detect motion, or you can even pick up vibrations using uh, microphones. And then when you have devices that, let's say, that are kept on solid surface and they are vibrating, you can encode information and detect, for example, uh, uh, how far the object is. And, uh, and you can sort of like get some estimate for the location of the object based on these vibration waves that are traveling on a medium. So it can also be one of the mediums. It's a bit unconventional that can be used for performing localization. So with this, we can come to an end of this lecture. And as you can see, there are many techniques and systems uh, and mediums that are used for localization and the right choice again, depends upon the application specification uh, and the, their specification. So, you would need to carefully look at what the application requires in terms of accuracy, the, their, its own constraints in terms of, for example, form factor, power consumption, and then sort of like come up with the right choice for the localization system that you would want to use uh, uh, for, for your application. So with this, we can come to the end of this lecture. Thank you very much.